Welcome back, big boy. Here we go. Let's have a look at this bad boy. Victory Roads. I keep calling it Road to Victory. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Don't be offended. So, this is an interesting system. And I haven't... You hear that noise? That's my 14-year-old water collie. He likes to hang out with me. Especially when it's hot. He likes the cold, the cold concrete floor. Uh, so, what was I saying? All right. So, the interesting system here, and let me just show you the whole map kind of set up. So, we're, we're literally ready to roll. And uh, you've got uh, Romania, Bulgaria, well, Romania, Hungary over there. Uh, we're looking west here. And then you've got the, uh, what should we call it, Black Sea, or whatever it is there. Not Black Sea. Whatever it is, the Baltic Sea. Uh, <clears throat> anyway. He failed European geography. The beginning of the game, they have, where's the scenario chart? Where is the scenario chart? So, the game is very well laid out. So for instance, here's the campaign game scenario chart. And it tells you your initial setup, reinforcements, campaign specific rules, the victory conditions to actually win. Uh, the couple of interesting things for the campaign game is that we we start off after the supply and Stavaka phases, and then you also have a let's see, uh, you have a where is it, a large offense or something? It's called a large offense. Where is it? Well, poopy pants. Uh, oh, well, it's here somewhere. I can't see it right now. Anyway, uh, you start the game with this large offense, and the idea behind the large offense is that you pick the headquarter unit, uh, it's kind of a supply hub slash headquarter unit, that is going to allow you, that allows you a certain number of units within range to go and do all sorts of fantastic, wonderful things that I, I'm going to have to refresh my memory on. So what they can do. More importantly, so, so and then the system itself uh, so the system itself, the reason why I'm curious about it is I'm not sure how it's going to play out you know, from a, um, you know, a, balanced game, a balanced game perspective. It's very difficult for both sides to really inflict damage on each other because the, the, the results, the defensive values of each side are fairly strong. And there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, busting up on each other. And not a lot of death that occurs, it seems, anyway, from my from a couple of turns of playing one of the small scenarios. So, uh, you know, these guys, these guys are in uh, light fortifications. You can see, I don't know if you can see this here. Where's this line here? That line there is is a fortification line all along that, and that. Uh, is, that really affects combat, and particularly when it's going across a, a river, there's, uh, it's gonna be a bloody exercise. The other interesting thing about the system is there are no zones of control. And that takes a little getting used to, so it really does mean that you, get, you have to keep solid lines. And as you can see, there ain't a lot of terrain. You can, you know, you can buttress this flank here, and you've got the ocean here, so you can kind of funnel guys in, and there's another defensive line there with light defenses. But, whew, I don't know if you can see that. See this here? There's a defensive line here, right? This is going to be pretty interesting. So what, what are we going to do? As the Soviets, the game has kind of got you set up to... There are a couple of big piles of armor and forces here. Sorry about banging the camera. So you can see this set of forces here is pretty strong. There's a whack of guys down here. Here. And this section here of the map is also really, really strong. And that's fairly weak defensively for the Germans, but some good terrain to kind of bottle stuff up in. It obviously would be a really nice to try and pocket um, try and pocket guys. That would be one one of my first goals. 
The other is, you know, I be I would be tempted to try and punch through this this section here and try and get this direction and try and really wrap up as a lot of these forces here, but I got nothing here to do that with. So the other the other consideration is taking out and converting the the, the Romanians to your side. There's a situation where that occurs. Uh, that's going to involve capturing cities and towns in there, knocking these guys out and these guys out down here. There's a lot of German forces that are kind of trapped in this little area here, and there's only uh, two main roads that exit this area unless they go all the way around. That's going to cause problems, I think, for, for the Germans. So a general push this way is going to be good. I'm practicing writing with my left hand because uh, my son broke his arm and he's worried about writing left-handed. So I'll, I'm practicing so I can show him that's not a big deal. Now there's an interesting little gap here. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, there might be an opportunity to try and funnel forces this way. I haven't really had a good look at that section of the map yet. This is uber tough with a second line of armor all along here. I think that the Soviets could do, unless they have some nice tactical chits, they could really get themselves in a world of herd here and blunt their offense very quickly uh, by trying to pound their way through here. It's almost like there would be a, a better location to try and uh, break through. I mean, here's, a, here's another stack of really good armor as well. They could potentially punch through here and there's not a lot to support them back there. There's one Panzer Division there. The first Panzer, what was that, fifth? I think, that, I think that's fifth. Uh, and there's three Panzer divisions there. But it's going to be an interesting game. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure how it's going to play out. There's a lot of little things to this game, and I think one of the first little things you have to do... Here, let me show you. Over here, we've got to pick five of these chits that we are allowed to use at the beginning of the game and they're kind of our tactical chits and there's a set of tables here's the German ones the set of tables here that define the value of the chit so you've literally got to go through it learn these and understand these and oh my god see that guy he's not clipped how dare he oops there we go it's not clipped either. So, uh, you know, we've got to check all these uh, these uh, tactical chits out and, and work out what the heck we're going to do. Uh, my goodness, who did these? I did that one. Okay, that's good. Yeah, the, some of these I just punched out because I needed the extra ones for the campaign. So, anyway, i I, I got to get uh, my head around this, understand what's going on. There's a reinforcement schedule here. It starts with uh, the operation migration there, right? And kind of run. So we're, I'm going to start out uh, with the plan that we're playing the ten turn scenario, the short campaign. And, uh, let's zoom out so you can see that. I don't know if that's even worth looking at, but there you go. All right. Now, uh, one thing that is interesting too is the setup is actually uh, activated, uh, set up for uh, the setup charts are structured for you really nicely so each army group has a different color icon and the color of the icon might be it's only colored on the side that it's supposed to be on for the setup so these are all reduced units or they call them uh, these are unreinforced uh, the flip side of them are reinforced so like this blue guy here is a reinforced unit on the back he'll be a 152 these are all forces that are all from the second ukraine front so when i'm setting this game up well, I can be looking for the, bl the blues, right? Of course, sometimes you, you have to flip a lot of these. You've got to flip every unit over to find the right color. That does become a little bit of a drag over time when you're doing that on four of those charts. It, uh, it starts to get uh, be a little bit of a, a drag. But I will say that it did not take anywhere near as long, considering I didn't know what I was doing, uh, to set this game up as I thought it would. I was uh, pleasantly surprised. It's probably in the order of, 
laying everything out on this took about an hour. Uh, it took me quite a while to work out the, the color schemes and, and what was going on there. I was a little bit slow on the uptake on that. But once I had that, it, uh, I could start dumping units where they needed to be and then, then sort them onto the track. Uh, I did not, I have not put the exact specific division units. So for instance, you know, these may have been transposed or swapped. Actually, no, I did put them exactly right for the combat values, but not by division ID. So we're not, uh, we're not gonna go down that little path to madness there. All right. If you have any ideas on what to do, I may have to have a quick little read about this particular uh, period of the war. I don't have a good handle on the actions the Soviets took or what the Germans did to delay. I have played this scenario previously in the Russian campaign, but we're obviously dealing with a lot more detail here and uh, clearly different scale. All right, that was pretty long windy video with really probably not a whole lot of content. Such is life. Later.